Hello and welcome. Today we're at Foothills Community Church and I'm joined by Dave Runyon, who was a pastor here for 10 years. Dave, thanks for having us here. It's good to be here, Mark. Dave, you've been involved in a program called the Arvada Church Network. What is that and how did it get started? As a pastor here in our community and in our city, I began to look around and realize that there were a number of churches doing all kinds of incredible things globally and here locally. And as I started to think about that, I began to dream about what would it look like if many of the communities came together and focused on like issues? And could we actually make a difference and begin to push the needle on some things that are really plaguing our community? So we began to focus in on issues with people in need and to dream about what it is that we could do together that we could never do alone. You know, I think it's so important that you have those kind of things. And how many churches are involved in this network? There's about 27 different churches that are involved, so, and that number has been continuing to grow over the, over the last six years. You and I have talked a lot in the past about the fact that you know, the, the city can do so much, the business community can do so much, and then the faith-based community can also assist us in those areas where people are falling through the cracks. Sure. Yeah, and one of the things that we've come to realize and come to really value is that the people who work in our city government, our local government, they actually know what the issues are in our city. And you're the ones that are getting the phone calls day in and day out, people asking for help. And so uh, one of the neat things that we've been able to do is to go in and to invite different to leaders, people Nick, like you, kind of Don boring, Wick, our police chief, Vicki Ryer, Mark Devin in the city manager's office, to come in and to share with us, what are you seeing in our community? And if you could wave a magic wand and change some things about our city, what would it be? And so as we hear some of those things from you, those of you that are on the ground floor, um, then we begin to th think and to pray about what is it that we could do and how could we leverage the people that come to our congregations each and every week in order to serve the common good. That's great. Dave, you've been involved in something called the neighboring movement. What is that all about? We've begun this, uh, this movement in which we're asking the, the 24, 25,000 people that come to our churches that live here in our area, to do very simple things that make a really big difference. And so we ask people to commit to learning the names of the people that live right around them because we think there's great power in going from stranger to acquaintance. And then we've asked and we've challenged the people in our city, the people of faith in our city, to throw great parties. Because we think when, there, when there's great parties, good things happen. People begin to share their stories with each other. And when you do that, the, the single moms get cared for by, by people that live right around them. The elderly shut-ins are watched after by the people that live right around them. And so everything's done out of relationship instead of program. Well, I think what you see there is that people then will shovel walks. They'll, they'll bring in food to their neighbor that they know is sick, things of that nature. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's just little things in neighboring make a big difference. Dave, I know you're a big dreamer. What are you dreaming of doing next? Last week, we had a meeting, and we had some people there from the police department, from the school system, and we began to dream about what would it look like to make a difference in our schools, especially some of our most under-resourced schools. And we've come to learn that up until about third grade, Kids are reading, are cold, learning to read, not to take the temperature, but after three, to take third the grade, the they're cold. reading to learn. And so if, if, a, if a student's not caught up in grade level right there at third Boys grade, the, the repercussions, and they're, they're behind most of the time for their entire life. And so we want to come alongside of our, of our schools and just serve our teachers, tell them how much we value them and, and that just honor those, those servants in our city that don't get a lot of credit, and then see if there's something that we could do to just simply help, help kids learn how to read. Dave, I am so pleased with the work that you are doing. As you know, I'm a big champion for partnerships. Yeah. And I've obviously spoken a lot in the past about the partnership between the city and the business community, but another important partner for the city is certainly the faith-based community. Yeah. You help us fill a lot of gaps that we're not able to meet, and I am very appreciative of your work in yeah. that area. It feels like the people of faith in this city are becoming known for their care for people in need. Thanks, Dave. That's another episode of Arvada Insights. Thanks for watching, and that's a wrap.